Earlier this week in Brussels, uh, we had the conference that saw the culmination of the Deep Linking Youth project, which has been run by the European Citizens Action Service, ECAS. And we in the Institute have played quite a prominent role in this. Uh, notably, uh, my colleague Fraser Henderson, who's here to answer a few questions, if you will, for us to understand a little bit more about this rather important project funded by the European Union. What was this all about? So the Deep Linking Youth Project was basically focusing on youth mobilities, working abroad, studying abroad, and it was to address a democratic deficit in terms of young people's participation in not just voting, but decision making. And the EU itself felt a need to sponsor a programme to research their opinions, is that right? Yeah, absolutely, and they're particularly interested in the Erasmus programme, but I think they recognise that young people's views are important. Our approach was quite novel. I mean, we wanted to go into the spaces where young people already uh, exist and have conversations, rather than have them come to the decision makers, which is um, a lot more intimidating and difficult for those young people. Plus, we get a, a kind of a new perspective. We get um, the not-so-usual suspects respond. Now, I've heard a phrase, digital dashboard, being used. Yes, that's what we, uh, we're calling this technology. But essentially, it's a view of conversations that are happening on the social web in a format which is easy to digest. Is this the same as social listening? It is social listening, but it's social listening with a twist because we've used artificial intelligence to get rid of all of the noise that you would normally get with social listening. So we're scraping 250,000 pieces of data every month. Every month? Every month, but we're actually only taking less than 1% as relevant. So I guess the question now is where we go forward with this and how the European Union can maximise its investment by really finding out whether it's got an insight and a tool that can really make a difference. Um, and I wonder whether the problem has been so far that you've been dealing fundamentally with fairly non-contentious issues. And could we use these, do you think, for uh, more controversial issues? I suspect so. I mean, this is experimental to some degree, but I think it's worth finding out. And if you think about traditional consultation, we always talk about monitoring the debate. Well, here's a tool for monitoring the debate. What we would hope is that the EU, having put a certain amount of money into learning about these scraping technologies, um, would apply them to current controversies in a way that we'd find out a bit more how worthwhile the technology is. Is that right? I think so. I mean, they could use it to, to benchmark people's attitudes before they go into a consultation, or they should just use it de facto um, all the time to monitor issues to see if young people actually do have different perspectives on the things that matter. Uh, quite a lot of our members here in the UK, but I'm hoping it will be of some interest also to those uh, in the wider European Union.